Hello there, and welcome to video number three, in which we're going to be looking at variation, its sources, and its heritable nature. So for the variation in a population to act under the influence of selection, it must be possible for variation to be passed from parents to children. Okay, so that was the key thing that I mentioned um, in the last video regarding heredity. And as I said then, this makes sense. We know that human children often look a lot like their parents. If it were, this wasn't the case, if we weren't able to pass this variation down in a lineage, um, uneven survival would lead to no changes in the morphology of organisms. So selection really wouldn't work. An example of the power of um, heredity is found in not natural selection, but artificial selection. So you can see some examples here. When, for example, humans for um, the needs of farming will choose um, particular traits and will actively breed organisms to try and enhance those traits. And this can end up with the extreme forms of anatomy that you can see on these gorgeous paintings of uh, 18th and 19th century farm animals that we see here. The extreme forms that um, uh, human artificial selection has resulted in shows us the potential impact of selection and heritable traits. Although I would like to remind you, bear in mind, this isn't natural selection here, right? This is artificial selection. We humans are actually jumping in to, um, to um, take advantage of heredity in these cases. The source of variation in organisms is through mutation. Now mutation occurs at random and it occurs in random places in DNA by a number of different mechanisms. I'm not going to go into the mechanisms in any depth um, over the course of these videos, um, but you're more than welcome to ask me about them and I'll do my best to answer any questions that you have if you would like to know more. These mutations are completely random when they occur and where they occur, give or take, I mean, there's lots of um, research into how random they really are. Let's not talk about that. But the important thing when a mutation has occurred is that then this is filtered through the processes of development, which I, I mentioned in the last video. We can see a really famous and a really cool example here, which is um, the result of a mutation in a single part of the DNA of a fly. So this is a mutation within a gene that's called antennapedia, if you're interested in knowing about it. And a mutation in this gene, antennapedia, changes the development of normal antennae, shown on the left here, these tiny things here. Um, a single mutation st stops those developing into antennae and instead um, these antennae develop into legs, as shown in this mutant fly on the right hand side here. So this one mutation actually changes the developmental pathway that instead of saying, okay, on the front of this fly, we're going to have some antennae, says, okay, on the front of this fly, we're going to have some legs. It's a really famous and a very cool example of the impact that a single mutation can have. But I want you to note that the effect a mutation has bears no relationships to the need of an organism at all. Mutations don't care about the well-being of the organism to which they occur. And indeed, as a result, most mutations are very, very bad for the organisms to which they occur. So the vast, vast majority of mutations are bad things, but then they are filtered through um, selection. So I, I thought it would be really useful to have a quick recap here. So for a trait to undergo change through time, it must be heritable and it must vary in a population. Studies of DNA suggest significant genetic variation occurs in populations. And the same is true of the morphology of organisms. The images here are showing you actually all one spe species of amblypygid. These are arachnids that are relatively closely related to spiders. Um, the, the only um, popular culture reference I can think of to introduce you to them are in the Harry Potter movies where um, Mad Eye Moody uh, performs the Cruciatus Curse on a weird creature on uh, Ron Weasley's head. That right there is an amplipigid. That's why amplipigids are awesome. 
This is a species called Daemon variegatus. And as you can see, it varies quite a lot in its colors, its patterns, and its shape, and the size of the, the front um, appendages that you can see here. So we know that a lot of variation occurs in populations. And when those individuals vary in reproductive success, that heritability matters. So that's the first two planks of evolution that we've covered. And in the next video, we're going to be looking at the third one. So I'll see you there very shortly.